Good morning, everybody. Um, this morning, I'd like to give you an update as to the progress that's going on with Redwood. We've uh, been working diligently on our two programs with an ophthalmology, uh, two um, programs for the development of products to treat dry eye disease. I'm going to go over um, the company itself, the dry eye market, uh, as well as the pathology of the disease. Uh, our two programs, RP501, our medical device, RP101, our, our um, pharmaceutical, and strategic plans, and the summary for the future. The company develops next-generation therapies for the treatment of dry eye disease, and we have two programs, as I said. RP501 is a medical device which aims to treat mild to moderate dry eye disease in men and women of all ages using the IntelliGel platform. RP101 is our program, for, uh, which is basically a, uh, a pharmaceutical to treat moderate to severe dry eye in postmenopausal women, uh, there where we use a topical low-dose estrogen uh, to treat uh, women. And then lastly, we have an exclusive license for the use of in the IntelliGel platform in all applications within ophthalmology. It's a patent-protected combination of polymers and water that forms a viscous gel on the front of the eye that protects the eye and lubricates it uh, and as well as stays on the eye long enough so that it can be used as a drug delivery platform to deliver active substances to the front of the eye. A little bit about the company. Um, I th we're... Uh, a group of white men, it looks like. <laughs> um, no, we're... <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> um, we, are, we come from uh, backgrounds in, uh, in, pharmaco in the pharmaceutical industry and medical device area uh, within clinical trial development and also uh, within uh, uh, business development. The, uh, we, we find ourselves in a really strong industry right now within pharmaceuticals. If we look over the past two decades, uh, the, uh, the sales of pharmaceuticals uh, grows, and it's, it just confirms the fact that uh, there is a strong demand for, for medicines. And uh, we also see that there's a healthy growth in R&D spending, uh, as we see that it grew from, up from $127 billion in uh, 2012 to um, around $200 billion in 2020. If we look specifically at the market for ophthalmology products, um, the global ophthalmology um, uh, area is growing. It was valued at around $36.7 billion in 2020. That is the, the market for, for ophthalmology drugs. And we see that there's a rising prevalence in disorders as uh, <clears throat> that, that's going to grow around 6.4% compounded annual growth over the next uh, years to 2028. And the, the primary drivers from a, from a medical standpoint are dry eye disease, age-related macular degeneration and glaucoma are the primary drivers. So it's a healthy uh, growth in, uh, in the need for, for new drugs. Dry eye is an interesting area. It's uh, it basically been, uh, um, awareness has grown in the US, um, in part due to leading products like Restasis, which is called cyclospor which is cyclosporin for the treatment of dry eye. Um, there are over 50 million people, both in the US and the EU, that suffer from it. And it's the most common ocular disorder, uh, the reason why people go to see an ophthalmologist. Um, and about 55% of dry eye sufferers consult an eye specialist um, regarding this disease. And what we see in the, in the graph here is the, the two left uh, areas, artificial tears, that's a first-line therapy, shows you that the growth uh, from 2019 to the forecast in 2030. Um, and then you have the second-line therapies of anti-inflammatories and the um, in the second line therapies, as I said, that is also expected to grow quite dramatically. And this is really due to um, uh, an aging population and, and awareness and also new products that are coming to market. Today, dry eye is a multifactorial disease. There's not one silver bullet to, uh, to actually solve all the, uh, uh, the problems of, of all the different variations of dry eye. And so um, there's a, a real need for more effective and, and, uh, and, and uh, reliable, convenient treatments. So the first line of therapy that most people try are artificial tears. They're basically uh, saline solutions that you can buy at the, uh, 
at a, um, at a pharmacy, and, and most people try that. About 80% of all sufferers try that. But artificial tears are themselves are uh, quite ineffective if you have moderate to severe dry eye. You're going to have to use uh, artificial tears more often. So many pr turn to uh, prescription treatments that have active pharmaceuticals in them. And then you turn to basically corticosteroids or cyclosporin and things, products that actually tinker with the uh, immune system. Um, so you um, you have to be quite judicious about which products you choose once you have a if you have a, a more severe uh, form of the disease. Um, today you're tr using a shotgun approach, trying to uh, solve every type of dry eye instead of looking at targeted therapies, looking at specific patient population. So we feel uh, that our two products will be well positioned to, to help treat a, a broader patient population. First, the, you know, as a first line therapy, we feel that RP501 will be ideal, basically to treat both men and women of all ages with a mild to, to moderate uh, disease. And, and then uh, RP101 will come in and help uh, sufferers at, uh, at a second line therapy or even third line therapy. Dry eye is a manifestation of an instable tear film. When the, the tear film becomes instable, it dries up and, uh, and causes pain, dryness, suffering, foreign body sensation. And, um, and, and so what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to stabilize the, the, uh, the tear film um, with, our pro with products. So the tear film is, ve is really important to, to uh, cover the entire cornea, to smooth out the irregularities. It's there to not affect the eyesight. It should be stable enough so that the eyelid can open and close without any problems. It contains about 3,000 different nutrients and components, um, and it should have the right viscosity so it doesn't, um, doesn't interfere with the normal function of your eye. Um, what can cause the, the, the tear film to, to uh, become deficient? Well, there are main, many different uh, reasons. First, you can see it with rising age. The older you become, the more the incidence uh, um, occurs. And one can look at uh, hormonal changes, for instance, in, uh, in primarily in women, that can cause uh, a, a deficient uh, production of tear fluid. It could be an adverse environmental impact, such as a, a warm environment, a cold environment, or even a uh, a dry, a dry uh, uh, air, and it can also be part of a, of a, a chronic inflammatory response. Allergies, infections, drug side effects, and even an underlying Huygens syndrome can cause uh, dry eye. So we feel that we have uh, we've found a, a, a great uh, product to be uh, to, to embark in the first line treatment area. Basically, uh, RP501 is our program here, which demonstrated uh, safety and efficacy in, as our placebo control in our prior RP101 phase two trial, where we saw that it could actually improve objective and subjective s symptoms and objective measures with one or two installations per day. And this is based on the IntelliGel platform, uh, where you cause then high wetting of the, of the front of the eye. It increases residence times, keeps water on the eye longer, reduces uh, inflammation uh, as a result and then can reduce symptoms of dry eye. And we believe that it can potentially reduce uh, the number of installations per day. Um, as I said earlier, as, we, as our population grows older, the incidence uh, increases as we also use mobile phones or are looking at our, our, our screens more often, even with, with, um, with computers, we see that, uh, that the uh, dry eye increases. So we believe that RP501, because of its clinical proof in the prior phase two, um, uh, our RP501, we believe that it will be uh, a, an excellent uh, new product, a next generation product for providing relief in both men and women of all ages. So our plans right now are, are to, to bring RP501 to market. That is our, uh, one of our main focuses in the, in the company. We believe that RP501 represents a uh, next generation therapy beyond artificial tears and gels that where we basically are piggybacking on the benefits and performance of these two categories. Artificial tears uh, provides um, easy application um, but not enough effect. Gels provide good effect but are difficult to employ. We have what's called a thermogel. Uh, that is that it, it behaves like water at room temperature. But when you put it on the front of the eye, the heat of the eye then causes it to, to uh, become more viscous, stay on the eye longer, and then provide longer relief. So we believe that we'll be solving primary uh, customer needs for efficacy and convenience. 
Today we have a clinical trial that's underway in Vienna uh, to demonstrate safety, tolerability and efficacy in 60 men and women in two different categories, those with contact lenses and those without contact lenses. And um, this trial is uh, we're recruiting currently and testing and we expect results in the first half of 2023. So our short-term goal then is with these results in hand is then to submit a CE mark application uh, shortly thereafter after we have results and to launch RP501 in the EU. And then our intermediate goal is to build an engine of revenue growth uh, with this new product uh, through sales and licensing partnerships. We'll be looking at perhaps select geographies in Europe to first launch this to and find then licensing partners or other partners uh, in other geographies where they have uh, strengths that we can piggyback on. So we believe that RP501 can be developed, tested, and commercialized quickly, which will help gener generate cash flow for a positive cash flow for the company quickly. So that was RP501. That was our medical device. Um, then we have RP101, uh, just to go uh, give you an idea of how the um, the brilliance of this program. It's a novel treatment for moderate to severe dry eye disease. And this is, as I said earlier, it's a low dose estrogen therapy that we're putting on the front of the eye to stimulate production of tear fluid. And we've seen, um, uh, we've seen f effect and, and safety in our prior phase two trial. It is, will be the first hormonal therapy of this kind for the treatment of dry eye and uh, it will be targeting the underlying biological mechanism, a underlying biological mechanism of dry eye disease in postmenopausal women. And this is the real brilliance of it. It's a unique API targeting a specific patient population, which we think will benefit strongly for it. And the results that we have shown uh, basically piggyback on the prior, there are two uh, phase two trials that were conducted in, in the U.S. earlier with the same active pharmaceutical ingredient, and we saw positive results there. In January of this year, we, uh, we actually got an acceptance from the FDA uh, regarding the phase three design, and uh, we're quite confident about uh, going forward with that. At this point, we're looking for uh, partners to help us take it to the next step. A summary of the phase two clinical trial results, we, uh, we showed both e efficacy and safety, but efficacy in, and critically in one objective symptom and one subjective symptom. And this is really quite difficult for any phase, three, uh, phase two trial to see effect in both one, uh, in, in, in each category, and as an objective and subjective uh, uh, measure. This is important for the US FDA and for the EMA in order to demonstrate uh, uh, efficacy of the program. We feel that we're well positioned for further development. My first question could be, uh, what are your strategic goals? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cecilia, for it. Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> now, our strategic goals at this point, as, a, as, the, as the slide says, that basically is to carry out um, our more technical work in uh, in the uh, and medical regulatory work for the CE application, scale up production of our um, of our commercial uh, uh, product that's going to come out, and then also as well to um, uh, complete the phase uh, this this clinical trial, basically to show safety, tolerability, and, and efficacy in the this target patient population, um, and then also to explore other possibilities of IntelliGel as a carrier uh, with um, uh, with other products um, that we can br expand our portfolio with. Yes, with the phase two trial, we uh, the estrogen uh, RP one hundred and one, the estrogen therapy was. Uh, there were three arms of active, and then there was a IntelliGel comparator. Yeah. We saw. Uh, we saw. A significant effect in both object, an ob objective measure and uh, subjective measures. We didn't meet the arbitrary fa uh, primary endpoint for our objective measure, but upon uh, a deeper review looking at our other endpoints, we saw that we actually uh, did see separation or significance over, in, in terms of effect, from the active over the placebo control. And um, more importantly, the endpoint that we were looking at is a primary endpoint, or sorry, is a measure that has been used by other development programs in the U.S. Um, and uh, and approved by the FDA. So the measures that we've seen affect both 
objectively and subjectively are endpoints that are, have been used for prior products gaining approval by, in the US. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll tag on the US market. Um, it is both um, a large market and very competitive. So I'm wondering, have you done, how much research have you done about the market and do you have a great competitor there who has the products that are similar to yours? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, are you talking about, which, which product are you talking about, RP101 or, or 501? You, you pick. <laughs> okay. With RP101, I think that um, uh, we, we have done a competitor analysis and it, it's quite clear that uh, an estrogen-based therapy will be unique. It'll be the first of its kind. And a lot of companies are looking for products that are differentiated in, per in terms of mechanism of action as well as, as uh, a, having a unique target patient population and that RP101 is totally unique. So it is, there is a, a need for such a differentiated product on the market. Um, with 501, right now we are uh, looking at our regulatory pathway in the US. We don't know if it's going to, we're, we're discussing with the regulatory consultants which pathway we're going to go. Uh, whether you're going to go as a, uh, uh, a medical device or some other pathway at this time. It's a difficult process uh, to go through in the FDA, but we have to be smart about how we, we launch in the U.S. I think from, from a novelty standpoint, uh, 501 is a next-generation therapy that builds upon either uh, you know, from artificial tears and gels, and I, our hope is that we will be starting a new, opening a new category within the so, uh, uh, assortment of different products out there. So th we think that there it could have uh, a very large advantage commercially. Um, uh, if you look at our balance sheet, I think that you see that there, we are going to need more money. I invite you to. <laughs> we are going to, uh, we're, uh, anybody that looks at our balance sheet uh, sees that we're going to um, need more money. But at this point, we're evaluating our options, and I, and I think that uh, we'll make a, 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 a practical and logical choice and inform the market in due time. Uh, the current runway? Um, right now, I think we have uh, about uh, two months cash, but there are different financing options to, to extend that uh, um, into next year. Um, you were talking about uh, um, uh, getting this uh, to market. Uh, do you have any discussions ongoing? And what's the interest like? Yes, with RP101, uh, we've been talking with uh, larger pharmaceutical firms as well as with uh, other investment groups that are looking at uh, helping us going to the next step. And we are in a discussion right now. Uh, regarding RP101 and taking into the next clinical phase. Is there anything that you would prefer, rather a big player or, or distribution? or How are your thoughts there? Well, uh, I think we have to be open to different alternatives at this point. Um, it's not a trivial amount to go into a phase three, for instance, um, and so you know, we, we, would, we're, we have to be quite open to different alternatives. Thank you. And I think with that, we say thank you to you. Thank Martin. you. And thank, thank you for you. letting me interrupt you. <laughs>